I know there wasn't pressure because I said to everybody, um, like the label and management, I asked them to, um, to not, you know, call me and ask me how it's going and to basically not get involved until I asked them to because um, with the last record, it was kind of like we'd write a song, record it, and then FedEx it off to the label right away, and that got, you know, I didn't want to do that because I felt like then I'd feel pressure, like everyone was judging the songs right away. So I just waited till I had a whole bunch and I was comfortable with them, and then and then I gave them, gave it to them to listen. So that was kind of an easy way to deal with it for me. You know, I just didn't want people on the phone going, how's it going, what's it sound like? and freaking me out. <laughs> well, of course it is, because my songs are autobiographical, even though I write them with other people. Um, you know, they're helping out. As most people I write with are helping out with the music side of things. Um, and I focus on lyrics and melody and stuff, but it's different with everyone I write with. You know, some people, whatever. That's, that's the beauty of co-writing, is that, you know, just help out in different areas. And... Like, um, yeah, I mean, it's important to me because my songs come from my heart, you know. I think more so on the uh, on the first record, I think this second record really proved it. I mean, you can't listen to those songs and deny that, like, I had anything to do with writing them, you know what I mean? Like, they're so personal and it's kind of obvious, I think, you know, and the cool thing was I wrote about half the record with my best friend and that was really, really awesome because she was a girl where I've done most of my writing with guys and um, it was, you know, she knew everything that I was going through so it was, and she's really talented so it worked out really great. It's just easy for me if someone could sit down and play the play an instrument and I can just like focus on what I'm writing about but that was kind of like now like I think I'm going to be at the point where I can do it on my own um, more songs all by myself because I'm a better musician now because I've been I've never taken lessons I've never practiced but now that I've been forced to play with my career with playing shows all the time now I'm way better and I get instruments now and what you know, how to write the music for a song, so it's going to be easier this time just to do some more songs, I think, by myself. But there's something weird about when you're writing with someone else, there's, like, pressure to get it done, or there's, like, pressure to, you know, they're there in the room, it's, like, your time, it's, like, okay, we got to write this song, let's get it done. I, like, it's, I'm a lot faster, you know, coming up with my lyrics and melodies when someone else is in the room, like, playing guitar, I'm, like, okay, i got to get this done. <laughs> it's weird. I just, from a young age, like my mom said when I was two, she knew I was going to be a singer because as I was just running around the house singing, um, I think, you know, after, you know, hearing bands and like learning records that made me want to do it even more. And some of the bands I grew up listening to were like Beach Boys, CCR, and then I got into like Green Day and Blink-182 and Alanis Morissette when I got into high school, that kind of a thing. Um, but it's something that I've just naturally, it's just always been a huge thing, part of my life. No, I'm totally, like, you can't let things hurt you, because it's going to happen. And the bigger you get, the more people are going to have that, you know, try to bring you down. That's all part of it. But really, it's a good thing, because the more people that like you, the more people that hate you. I mean, that sucks, but... You just have to look at the positive side and think about, you know, the good things. Like, I have fans all around the world who are amazing and supportive, and that's pretty cool. Overseas, the fans tend to be a little more crazier, like, just more excited. I don't know why. Um, and they kind of follow you around everywhere and, like, some of them are really aggressive. It's funny. Um, when I got to Korea, the airport, the first time I went, there was probably 300 kids, and they all just attacked me. And like, I got like a rabbit and a wedding dress and just all these crazy gifts. 
it's like a different lifestyle, but I feel like I do normal things. You know, I go out to bars with my friends. I I go shopping. I, you know, I have a house. I do, I cook. I do normal things. Like I am a normal person. Just the situation's a little different. Shooting videos is really fun. You know, the first few award shows I went to were <laughs> awesome. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm here. <laughs> and like the MTV awards when I won my first award, that was that's a huge highlight for me. Um, everything, touring, touring's my the the best part. There's a bunch of other things that kind of come along with this music career that you didn't really know would happen, but um, like interviews and so on and all kinds of press and promoting and, but that's important. My favorite part is being on stage performing and that's what I'm always looking forward to doing and I have a tour starting in September. It's called the Bones Tour. Yes, we're coming back here. I think a koala is my favorite animal. I hate dogs, I hate cats, because <laughs> I'm allergic to them. Um, cats are weird, I'm like, completely allergic to them. I like, I only like small dogs. Actually, I think it'd be fun to have a really small dog, one that fits in your purse. <laughs> That's so girl. Um, but actually, I think a koala bear is my favorite, because I got to see one last time I was here. It was a cute